Welcome back to the ONTV Fantasy Football Show. We're a quarter of the way through the season already. Wild. <laughs> uh, well, a little under quarter now with <laughs> the extra week that they've added the last couple of years. Um, but week four was another good week. Lots of uh, scoring for the most part. Uh, not as crazy as a 70-point matchup this week. Um, but we had good scoring all around, I would say. Um, and there were some fun weeks. Well, with a few exceptions. Yeah, I, I <laughs> didn't know how to phrase it. Um, I don't know how to lead into it. But, uh, Joe, you didn't have a great week, and we'll we'll get into that. No, but, and, and you know what? Even though you, you say that there was a lot of scoring, I'm, I'm looking at the scores from this past week in our league, and one, two, three, four teams failed to crack 100. Some, or one team just barely cracked 100. So, Overall, if yeah. you're looking at league average, it's probably down this week. Yeah, I think that's something that I noticed across a lot of my leagues is there was a lot of disparity between teams. So there, your team either blew up <laughs> or did nothing, basically. Um, now, I've been playing fantasy football. I just looked it up recently. I've been playing for about 20 years now, and the beatdown that I got this past weekend ranks up there among the worst I've ever had since I've started playing fantasy football. Yeah, I mentioned it to you when I came in today. It's one of the, it's one of the lowest scores, if not the lowest that I've ever seen <laughs> in fantasy. And I feel bad saying that, and I may be missing out on something. But for somebody to set their entire lineup, you know, not missing somebody that was on bye or hurt or something, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, but we'll get to that in a moment, um, because on the flip side. I was the highest scoring team this week. <laughs> of course. Um, I put up 184 and a half points playing Malik's last place team, which is now officially the last place team. You know, and 120 points isn't something to sneeze at. Like no. he would have beaten a lot of people. At least six teams in our league. He just yeah. caught you on a bad week. Yeah, and that's what I I'd been saying about Malik's team. I think it's it's underrated. We still haven't seen Jamar Chase reach his full potential because the Bengals have just looked awful. Um Malik did get an injury with Mike Williams this past week. Um he didn't leave a whole lot on his bench either. Maybe uh I mean Khalil Herbert technically outscored Travis Etienne, but I wouldn't have played Herbert over him. Yeah. But the Bears kind of blew up this week. And funny enough, it's it's something that we talk about all the time that, you know, I picked up the hot waiver wire A-chan and I didn't play him uh, because I was nervous about the Buffalo defense, which I was sort of right on. Yeah. The Buffalo defense did really well against the Dolphins, um, but I was wrong that A-chan got the touchdowns. Um, and if I would have played him, I would have had over 200 points. Yeah, you know, one thing that did surprise me in another league, I actually drafted a chain and and uh, I started him uh, in that league uh, this past weekend. And the thing that surprised me, you know, we all knew he blew up last week, previous week. What surprised me is how he got the goal line carries and Moster got nothing. Yeah, there was only crumbs left for Moster. That really surprised me. Yeah, I believe Moster uh, fumbled twice in the game, which was wild. Um, and that's, it's kind of unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to go about this going forward because HN definitely looks explosive, but if you look at it, he only had eight carries. Um, he did get 101 yards. That's cause he had that big, uh, like 50 some yard run or something like that. Mm. And he got two touchdowns. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a weird one, I think going forward, but but keep in mind, too, uh, Buffalo came out with something to prove. Allen yeah. was uh, Malik's uh, stud of the game, 36.5. Uh, they came out and had something to prove. And Miami yep. uh, faced a real defense and mm -hmm. uh, had their first challenge of the season. And um, so I don't know if I would judge anything by their performance against Buffalo because Buffalo came out with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. Um, obviously McCaffrey is McCaffrey and he's back to being a 48 point, a player that you just, you love to have on your roster. And, and so far I'm, I'm loving it. Um, and one final thing, my team may be getting Jonathan Taylor back this week. 
they may be getting Cooper Cup back this week. Yeah. Yeah, I heard week five with Cooper Cup. So I'm starting to feel good about my team. Finally. I'm just wondering how that's going to affect uh, Puka. He got you 31.3 yeah. uh, this week. He's just been looking fantastic. Even though he did he get, did get that touchdown in overtime, but still, mm-hmm. I don't dismiss that. But yeah. uh, there's going to be a lot of mouths to feed when uh, Cup comes back. You got Tutu yeah. uh, playing well, Nakua, and now Cup coming back. So yeah, a lot uh, of people. for that reason, uh, I, in my other league, I would – I'm starting Stafford, and if you have Stafford on your roster, you might want to consider it. Yeah, a lot of people think that uh, Puka and Cup can maybe play together pretty well, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do uh, with those splits uh, going yeah. forward. How do you double cover those receivers? You can't. Right. Um, unfortunately, we do have to get right into your matchup. Uh, yeah. Uh, Drake is no longer winless. He put up his Best performance of the year by far. Uh, put up 159.9 points. Here's what's frustrating for me. Over the past few weeks, he started a guy on IR. He His clear better quarterback was on his bench. And when he finally goes in and cleans house, I'm the victim of it. Yeah. And I end up losing by almost 100 points. Now, it's not just that his team played well. My team... I don't know what happened. Jordan Addison, Minnesota wide receiver, who was looking great through the first three weeks of the season, got zero. He had one target. Now, last week, he did nothing in the first half, but then it seemed like Cousins was making an effort to get him the ball in the second half, and he ended up with some decent numbers the previous week. This week, zero. That shocked me. Yeah. And definitely hurt my squad, and I don't know what to do about him going forward. Yeah, it was definitely a weird scenario for Minnesota in general. Kirk Cousins only threw the ball uh, 19 times. He did have two interceptions, I believe, in the game. Yeah. Um, and we know he's kind of become more of a gunslinger kind of guy, so he's, he's prone to interceptions. But they just didn't throw the most very much at all, and Minnesota has been one of the highest – passer rating teams uh, it, for the first yeah. three weeks of the season. So yeah. I don't know if it was just game plan against Carolina or what, but it, it was definitely a, a weird week. Yeah, and you look at some of my other players, and again, this is just bad luck. Mahomes, two ugly interceptions, yeah. total 13.22 points. Mm-hmm. My Indiana uh, Indianapolis kicker, who I was expecting to get some good points from, one point. My yeah. my highly ranked San Francisco defense, two points against yeah. uh, Arizona, who seems to be turning that ship around. Yeah. Um. So, I, I mean, I got – Jacoby Myers was expected to get a ton of points against that Chargers defense. People were saying it was going to be a shootout, mm-hmm. five, 5.3 points. So, my my team failed all around. Uh, B. John Robinson, he was my first-round draft pick. He was my stud of the game, 18.7. Yeah. Uh, Pierce seems to be looking good over the past two weeks or so, even though he only produced 11. Uh, it's better than how the season started out. So, yeah. I hope this was a fluke to have so many players uh, just disappoint in all the same week. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. And you did leave some points on the bench. Kyron Williams had a big game, 27.7. Uh, he looks like he's going to be pretty solid. I don't know if he's a great running back per se in the NFL, but he's a good fantasy asset at this point. Um, yeah. And you know, this is benefit of hindsight, but here my starting backs, I went with three starting backs, had one in the mm-hmm. flex spot. We got Bijan Robinson. We got Gibbs from Detroit and we got Pierce from Houston. That's a pretty solid trio of running backs, mm-hmm. but how, if I would have known how underutilized Gibbs would have been, you better believe Kyron Williams would have been in my starting lineup, yeah. but I thought that was a pretty solid trio of running backs. And, mm-hmm. of course, the one guy on my bench is the one who blows up. Yeah. And then, of course, Devo Samuel banged up going into this game. It was a good thing you didn't play him. Yeah, I thought about it. But, uh, yeah, he seems to be more hurt than he's letting on. Yeah. And then uh, Marquise Brown has actually he's played pretty decently. Uh, so I, I think your team is, is fine, obviously. Uh, it might just be got to figure out who to start. Yeah. I think it was a fluke. And like we said, I think Drake's team is better than people think when he was started 0-3. 
But at the same time, you're not going to get, I mean, 50, 54 points from Chicago players every week. Uh, they played Denver, who is a terrible defense. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it the should be The surprise on, on his roster was Komet. Yeah. If you look at Komet through the season so far, he he was doing single digits up until, of course, he faces me and catches two touchdowns. Yeah, the touchdowns will do it for you. That's for sure. So we'll see going forward. <laughs> um, Up next. Oh, we, we have the juggernaut. The undefeated team. My Lord. Tracy's top notch team does it again. 139.3. And uh, I'll say whatever it is, but. There is definitely some <laughs> luck involved, and this is what proves it in fantasy football. And it, you get the players to play their best games at the right time. Mm-hmm. David Montgomery this week for her was huge, scoring 34 points. Mostert did nothing when last week he blew up. Yeah. The Dallas defense, again, has become one of those defenses that they can get a touchdown from their defense almost any given week. Yep, she's been really riding their Dallas defense. And like you said, she's lucky this week because normally reliable players that have gotten her to this point, when they didn't show up this week, other players stepped up and yep. uh, handed her a victory. Yep. that The 34 points from Montgomery is huge. And then yeah. you look at, you know, Hawkinson, who's been playing really well, 4.4. Uh, I'm actually surprised she started. She started a tight end in a flex spot, so she yep. started two tight ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even though they only combined for about 13, 14 points, um, she still gets the victory. Yeah, and she had Nico Collins on her bench, uh, who put up 35 points. Woo! Now her wide receivers are pretty good with Devontae Adams and Brandon Ayuk. Plus, T. Higgins was injured going into this game, so once again. She has a lot of opportunities going forward to put up even more points. What are they saying about Higgins' injury? How much time is he getting? They're gonna saying that he's going to try to play through it, which wow. is terrifying to me because Joe Burrow is already playing through a calf injury. T. Higgins hasn't been very good uh, with Joe Burrow's injury, so I'm not sure how that's going to go going forward. But from all the early reports, that's what I've heard. Um, on the other side, real quick, my brother's team, Stefan Diggs, had a crazy good game. Brother Three touchdowns. So consistent. Yeah, uh, Jalen Waddle still seems to be getting his footing going uh, for the Dolphins. I don't know what's going on there. Well, remember he came; he's coming off an injury. I I don't know what the injury was, um, but I know he had gotten hurt last week, so he's probably playing through that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you look at the rest of his squad; a lot of single digits there, and then yeah. he got minus one from his Pittsburgh defense. Yeah. Against Houston. Like, yeah. who who could have predicted that before the week started? Yeah, and then Chris Olave, he's had over 10 targets in each of the first three games. Only had six targets in this game, game for one catch. I think part of that was because of the Derek Carr injury. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think my brother just had some some extra bad luck this week. But. Mc, uh, McLaurin, I'm a little surprised to see him on the bench. I, it seems like that's a guy you might want to get into your starting lineup. I know Washington hasn't been playing all that well this year, but uh, 22.6 from McLaurin on the bench. Yeah. I think it's tough, though, when you have Diggs, Waddle, and Olave. Like, his wide receivers are so strong. You he's, know what? he's almost in the same position that you're in with your running backs, where it's like yeah. you Good bench answer. one and the other ones maybe go off. You know, in some ways – uh, bye weeks are a blessing because up till now you're really struggling with who to sit, who to start, and then you you bench the wrong guy. Bye weeks force you to make that decision. So yeah, in a way, you could look at bye weeks as a blessing. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, on to the next matchup. Who had the mo- next most points? Uh, Ian's team. Ian. So Ian's ingenious team took down the halftime honeybees um, again. When Tua and Tyreek struggle, the halftime honeybees struggle. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the the key component to Becky's team. Ian's team has just been one of the most consistent teams, I feel like, where he's getting, you know, 10 to 15 points from almost every one of his players week in and week out. Uh, so he's still going to be uh, a spooky matchup to deal with, especially when Eckler comes back. Um, he's been dealing with an injury for a little while now. Yeah, none of those uh, numbers jump out at you as being, you know, game-changing, but they're yeah. consistent. 
16, 14, 14, 12, 16, uh, 23 from his quarterback, and it just adds up to a victory. Yeah. Um, and again, like I said, with Becky, Chris Godwin finally had a really good game, but Tony Pollard struggled. Joe Mixon struggled. Well, Tony Pollard didn't really struggle. He didn't have to play because uh, the Cowboys blew out uh, New England. And then Mike Evans, he's always struggled against New Orleans. He got banged up in this game as well, so he left for a while. And uh, I don't think he finished the game either. So Yeah, now one, I don't think it would have made a difference, but, you know, she's got Lamar Jackson on her bench starting to uh, mm-hmm. um DeAndre you, Swift. I mean, I would I would never start a Jackson over two of the way the Dolphins have been playing, but do you have a quarterback dilemma now, you know? Uh, yeah. Jackson's been playing well. He's getting some rushing touchdowns. Uh, I feel like almost you, you might want to use him as trade bait. And it's weird because it's another one of those problems where, like, Lamar Jackson has been, besides week one, has been a little bit more consistent than Tua. Uh, but Tua obviously can put up uh, weak winning points exactly um, in a good matchup. Yeah, a so. lot of single digits there, too. You know, even, and this is, you know, looking at our Cincinnati kick, kicker McPherson, this it's one thing I said on draft day. You're going to love McPherson. You're going to hate McPherson. <laughs> Last week, he put up some 50 yarders. He, I think he scored like 26 points or something. Yeah. This week, three points. Yeah. You just don't know what you're going to get from the guy. I think that problem just in lies with the whole Cincinnati Bengals offense. They look terrible yeah. right now, Shocking. and it's it's scary to start any of those players. And then finally, in the week matchup, of the week. <laughs> the Green Buckeye taking on the Dak Knight Rises. <coughs> it was kind of ugly. Uh, Sammy got a lot of points from that overtime victory for Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown um, mm. having that great connection, giving him basically over half of his points. Um, Look at that roster. Only three of his players scored t- uh, two digits. Yeah. The rest, nine, six, five, four, two, four. And he got a win. Yeah. That drives me crazy. Yeah. And it's it's partially due to Marie maybe getting a little too cute with the roster decision. Uh, I know she really likes Derrick Henry, so it surprises me that she benched him. Yeah. Uh, but I do understand he's been struggling a lot. Um, and Camaro looked pretty good coming out the gates. Uh, he had 13 catches, which is crazy for a running back. Um, Amari Cooper had a rough day. Kirk Cousins, like we talked about, had a really tough day. And then uh, the Seattle game was Marie's only chance, and Seattle took care of the Giants on the defensive side, so their offense did not have to do much. That was a tough game to watch on a Monday night. And yeah, you could, it was. I watched the uh, Eli Payton broadcast, and the, uh, Payton had a great – great line where Eli said, do you think Taylor Swift is at this game? And Peyton (laughs) said, if she was, she left. Yeah. And it's funny to watch those two guys unleash when the NFL is not putting a good product on the field. That, that game was hard to watch. Yeah. Um, let's quickly go to, uh, the waiver wire just because there's, there's not that much, uh, obviously in our league, there will be a little bit more than normal. Um, but if by chance you needed a quarterback, Russell Wilson has become one of the top guys this year, which is weird to say uh, for me. Um, And then wide receiver, we have Romeo Dobbs, Michael Wilson. Um, Romeo Dobbs getting a lot of looks from Jordan Love for the Packers. Michael Wilson, he's a rookie wide receiver, so maybe he's starting to get more and more time um, with that offense. Maybe he can turn into the number two guy behind Hollywood Brown. Um, and then we have another slew of rookies of Zay Flowers, Marvin Mims, Jaden Reed. And then there's Detroit's Josh Reynolds, but that's kind of starting to get too deep into the pool. Yeah. Um, you got, you kind of glossed over Baker Mayfield. Now he has a bye this week. Um, so he's getting his bye out of the way early. I'm wondering if that's someone you might want to stash as a bye week fill on, fill in going forward because uh, he's been playing surprisingly well for the Buccaneers. And yeah. he's thrown to Godwin. He's thrown to Evans. Um, he might be uh, a bye week stash. Yeah, and he he's looked pretty decently for, you know, most of his career. He's been, he's struggled for the most part. But uh, he's definitely fighting for tough yards. You've seen him run a little bit more this year. Um, and Tampa Bay just can't get their running game going. So they might have to throw. So that's, that's a decent option. Yeah. Joshua Dobbs also kind of a sneaky, weird one. 
for Arizona, he's had some good games. He's ran the ball a few times. Uh, again, I don't think too often in a 10-team league we have to look at other quarterbacks, but like you're saying, for bye week fill-ins, yeah. uh, you may need one. Um, on the running back side, I don't know if there's anybody worth getting. Uh, the Denver running backs are interesting, Jaleel McLaughlin and Samaj P. Ryan. But all the in early reports about Javante Williams' injury is that he should still be good to go or ba maybe playing through it. To me, I think Denver's backfield is just a mess, and I don't want to yeah. touch it. Now, if, if this point in the season you're, you have some running back issues, you need to start looking at trades. Yeah. You need to look at the other teams in your league, see what their weaknesses are, offer something that can help another team like in wide receiver, tight end or something, mm -hmm. and hope that they have somebody on the bench that you can put in your starting roster. But uh, yeah. you're not going to shore up your running back position on the waiver wire right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody wants to stream a defense, which is just switching out your defense uh, basically every week, Miami is playing the Giants. And Ooh. Seattle just sacked the Giants 11 times last night. Uh, so Miami might be a good a good option there against the Giants. They are really struggling right now. Um, so yeah, those are about about it. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Week Five matchups. What do we got here? Oh, I, uh, I'm not looking forward to this week. Yeah, let's I'm talk about that. I'm facing the Tracy Top Notch team. Four and oh. Uh, oh, that's, that's scary. Can you knock if, them out? I don't know if I've ever been intimidated by another <laughs> team before, but the uh, projected total very close, but as we've man. seen all year, Tracy's basically outperformed her projected total, uh, each and every week almost. Yeah. I've already started, uh, tweaking my lineup. I'm, you know, it's, it's a work in progress right now, but I'm thinking of putting Hollywood Brown who, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't started yet this season, but. I'm thinking of putting him in. Uh, I'm on the fence with Jameer Gibbs. I'm not sure what I want to do with him. Uh, yeah. Right now, just kind of temporarily, I put uh, Damian Pierce on the bench and brought in Kyron Williams, even though there's a questionable mark by him. Mm -hmm. But I think it was a, a hip injury or something. I'm hoping it's yeah. uh, nothing serious, and I hope he's uh, starting come uh, this weekend. But I got him in right now, so I'm, I'm kind of tweaking things. Uh, after uh, Matt Gay's performance uh, this past weekend, I might just do sort of an ad drop thing after the waiver wire. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I'm tweaking. Yeah. Um, right now, uh, Tracy has Goff in at quarterback against Carolina. Uh, yeah. Their defense hasn't been all that great. Uh, Adams against Green Bay. He's got something to prove against his uh, former team. Yeah. Uh, Ayuk had a monster game last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, she's uh, she's looking scary. Yeah, she's got a really tough decision playing Nico Collins or not this week. Uh, I know she was thinking about it. The one thing that I will say, because I know she listens, Atlanta is really a good against quarterbacks. They make them struggle, and Atlanta has one of the best cornerbacks that tends to shadow the best wide receiver on the opponent's team. Uh, so Nico Collins could have a tough week. Mm. I will say that. So that'll make that decision even more tough uh, going into it. Neither, that's, neither that's one of us. Uh, Dell. Neither one of us are really affected by bye weeks. Um, right. Uh, and Joku's the only one I have on a bye week, so that's not affecting me too much. Uh, she has a couple of Cleveland players. Other than that, uh, we're at full strength. Right. Yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, my matchup this week is against my wife, which I just played her in my ESPN oh. league, and I lost. So I will be seeking revenge, <laughs> hopefully in this league. Uh, the projections, hope, uh... projecteds don't matter right now because she has a lot of bye weeks, actually. So oh. I'm getting somewhat lucky here. Uh, Seattle is on their bye, so she's going to be without Metcalf or Lockett. Uh -oh. uh, Cleveland she's also. Been starting both of them. Yeah. Um, but she has a good deep bench. So she'll be able to plug in Derrick Henry. Gabe Davis has had a touchdown in three straight games. Um, Cortland Sutton's been kind of a, a decent play lately. So she should be fine for filling in uh, extra players. And uh, I'm at full strength, so I will take that. Uh, uh, just uh, have a pillow and blanket ready to go on the couch just in <laughs> case. Yeah, we'll see. Um, Malik is taking on Drake's team. 
Malik looking for his first win of the season. Drake looking to rebound off of a good win. Uh, should be interesting, I think. Like I keep saying, I think Malik's team is just somehow underperforming. Maybe because it's the name. Or maybe it's just bad juju. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, so that one should be... That one should be fun as well. Yeah. He's got Allen projected to score 20. Stroud is projected at 16. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, Malik, as far as projections go, and we know how that can go, uh, he's projected to win by quite a bit right now. Yeah. I don't see bye weeks affecting either team. Let's see. No. Oh, it's Mike uh, Williams with the Chargers, but he's on IR, so forget that. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like they're both going to be pretty much at full strength. So, yeah. Uh, we'll Drake see. does have a second tight end in his flex at the moment. I know he was talking about maybe moving some pieces around because his depth is hurting. Uh, so he may pick up somebody and that'll boost his projections back up. Uh, the next matchup that I have on my list is Sammy taking on Becky, the halftime honeybees. That should be a good matchup. Got two elite quarterback wide receiver hookups with Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown going up against Tua and Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Um, Chris Godwin is on by after just having a really good game, along with, of course, Mike Evans. So Becky's going to have to find some replacements for that. Oh, those are two stud receivers. Yeah, so she may, she may have to throw in uh, DeAndre Swift into her flex probably. And, ooh. Her uh, other running back depth or wide receiver depth is is lacking, so she may have yeah. to look for something. Yeah, she's gonna have a tough time filling those holes. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, she'll hit the waiver wire. But yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! And luckily for uh, for Becky, Sammy has Keenan Allen on a buy, so that's a big asset for him to be missing. So what's uh, Barkley's status? He's on track right now. Um, Do you think he'll be back? So he's been practicing. It's looking like he's gonna be back. In my big league, I'm playing him uh, until, you know, they say that he's out. But his projections are slowly going up as the week goes on. So it looks like he's trending to play. And they're playing against Miami, so they're probably going to be behind. So they might throw him the, the ball a lot. Yeah. And then finally, we have Ian's team against my brother's team. My brother's team still trying to figure things out. He's been kind of up and down. He's also affected by bye weeks with Ken Walker being out, who's mm -hmm. been Pretty good at um, getting into the end zone. But, again, I think my brother's team has some really good depth, so he should be fine there. Um, maybe a surprise, he does have Jamison Williams on his bench. Yeah. Now, I don't think Jamison Williams is going to get a full snap count in this game coming up, but he did get his suspension reduced. He's able to play this week. That could be a big asset going forward. Yeah, he's been the talk of uh, Sports Talk Radio, and y you know he's going to want the ball when he's on the field, but uh, the question is, has he earned it? Is he going to just yeah. slowly work his way? Is he in game shape? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, lot of factors. Yeah, um, I'm not predicting a huge performance, but it's nice to know that he's getting him back. Right. And then for Ian's side, he has a slew of bye week problems. Mm. Uh, both of his quarterbacks have the same bye, which is always a terrifying thing to find out. Yeah, he has an empty spot in the quarterback. Yeah. Justin Herbert right and Geno Smith both have byes. Uh, Austin Eckler, like we said, also on a bye, but maybe this will get him healthy. Oh, look at that. Uh, his kicker, Jason Myers, also on bye. <laughs> uh, a lot of his bench is on by, so he's going to have to make some some tough moves probably to add and drop some guys just to to get players on on his starting lineup. I wish he had the uh, audio drop right now. Is it the Backstreet Boys? Bye bye bye. <laughs> so that should be good. Um, Ooh, yeah, he's got to he's got to do some scrambling before kickoff because he is. I don't know if I've ever seen a team this affected by bye weeks and. You know, that's one thing on draft day. Now, I don't know if he drafted both of these quarterbacks, but you really got to look at a quarterback's bye weeks when you draft them because yeah. you can't have two quarterbacks with the same bye week. Do you, do you drop one or do you have to pick up a third quarterback? Yeah. That's a huge dilemma. Yeah, typically in that scenario, if I like both of my quarterbacks, I'll just pick up a third hoping that I have a nobody on my bench that I can get rid of. Right. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how Ian feels about his team. Um yeah. The standings still pretty tight. 
like I said, besides Tracy's team, undefeated, Malik's team, winless. Uh, everybody else is all pretty much grouped up there. A lot of two and twos, a lot of three and one, one and three. Um, and again, eight teams make the playoffs. So basically everybody is still in play. Um, long way to go. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's week four. And we're going into week five already. This football season has been flying by. Yeah, it has. And uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm at a point in the season now where I'm, I don't think I have to make major changes to my roster just yet. I'm sitting at two and two. And even though it feels a lot worse than it actually is, uh, it's still anybody's league, you know yeah. I mean? And like you said, as long as you can stay out of that bottom uh, part, uh, you should be making the playoffs. So yep. I'm not panicking. I don't know if anyone needs to panic. Well, Malik needs to start turning things around. Yeah, he needs, soon. To, he needs to kind of get going. Yeah, so we'll see. I, I let's. I'm going to make a bold prediction and say that Malik may get his first win this week. Okay, the last time you uh, doubted Drake's team, it didn't go so well. Yeah, but I'm not facing him this <laughs> week, so so we'll see. We'll see if Tracy can hold on for another uh, another win, or see if Joe can finally put an end to that to that <laughs> reign. But All uh, right. good luck, Tracy. Yeah. Hit the waiver wire. We'll see you guys next week.